Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Tech goes by many names. Business, fine art, forensic science. Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships. It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 260's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. My name is Kian Chin. And I am Solomon Long. We are electrical engineering students at Indiana Tech and will be graduating May of 2021. For electrical engineering, I gained an interest through robotics in high school, actually. And I got to know the mechanical engineering side of robotics, then I got to learn the electrical side, and I kind of learned that. I like the electrical side a little better than the mechanical side. I actually relate it back to cooking when I was younger find the meal that I like, tear it apart, and figure out what aspect about it that I like and see if I could recreate it at home. And I sort of took that, that logical like mindset of taking something that's interesting, breaking it apart, and putting it back together. And I found out then that engineering is, that's basically what engineering is. So <laughs> we decided to pursue this, uh, this project because it, it was sort of interesting. It was definitely difficult, but we hadn't seen somebody else do this before. Well, our project is basically a human detection device that detects human footsteps within a certain radius. The general functionality of our device is it takes in uh, frequency waves from anything around, and then we coded it onto the device where it just calculates and filters out anything that's not a footstep. And then from there, it just kind of calculates where the location is through a a um, neat function called multilateration, which is a whole math theory and everything. Yeah, so the, the process itself basically just takes data from a person walking around. It takes that data mixed with all the noise from the environment and filters it out using the, the code and the filters the device itself. Determines what signal is actually a person versus what was noise. Then uses the delay between all of the sensors to find out where that person is located. From my knowledge, the marketability of this product would be more towards the security side and marketing side, actually. So for security side, it's more of a discrete surveillance system versus like a camera in a room where someone can see it versus our sensing device that you can put under like a table where nobody can see it. And then it can also do like heat mapping and uh, population traffic to determine like in a room where the most visited places. So during the first semester of Senior Project, or Senior Project 1, we basically were just going through research, trying to figure out what project we actually wanted to talk about, what project we wanted to do. Once the project was decided, then the rest of the semester was research. 
and then CD Project 2 is where we actually really started like, going through and building the device. We had the components that we wanted and then we just went in with design iterations, we went in with all kind of just trial and error, trying to make something work, spending hours and hours in this lab. So to, to break the process down uh, to actually manufacture our device, what we decided to do was first start with what sensors we needed, what microcontrollers we needed, how we were going to hook everything up. To actually assemble the project, first we decided on how big the project was going to be, how much room it should take up, how got all the dimensions of all the components, the microcontroller, the sensors, the chip, all of that, the battery, then took the that design, uh, wired all the controllers and everything up onto a prototyping board, the filters, the, the microcontroller, the sensors, put it all together, and then just kind of temporarily mounted it to the device to actually prototype. And then for the actual like functionality of making all these components work together, it kind of was just all cored into the coding, which we used for coding MATLAB and also uh, C, C++ coding. And then from that, we used uh, kurtosis, which is kind of like a probabilities and statistics theory. Then from that, we used um, the time of arrivals and the time difference of arrivals of the actual wave. And then from that, we took that data in and put it into multilateration, which is kind of like the core bread and butter of the entire like project, where it determined where the location of that person was from the time differences of the wave to the sensors. Uh, I would say like for issues that we've encountered and kind of just like failures and prototypes it became very apparent that like the time difference and like having everything like really close was kind of an issue and then we decided for our last prototype that we built was going to be like increasing the distance between the sensors so that we didn't have to work as close with the time differences. Yeah, a lot of our, our device revolved around that time difference of arrival or time of arrivals. Mm -hmm. And that ended up, the faster that we could sample, the more accurate we'd be able to actually take that data. Overall, in like at least for me, what I used from my other classes for this project was coding skills. Uh, I also learned that uh, drawing like schematics and just drawing out ideas and just throwing out ideas end up creating better ideas than trying to find that perfect idea to start with. For me, like on a personal level, I'm, I'm very much a computer science guy. I really like to code. So being able to see my code that I wrote actually like do what I want is always fulfilling in itself. When the project was done, that first moment there just feeling that huge thing like it works. Yeah. And as soon as it worked, that was just a, that was super, super fun. Yeah. I really appreciated Indiana Tech for the, a lot of the professors that have been around. Like I know Zach, Rumsey, Professor Byers, all three of them have been huge supports. They've been super encouraging, they've been super nice. Having them help, that was definitely something that I really appreciated about tech. As excited as I am to graduate, I will miss all the friends and all the teachers that I have, but I am ready to, to move on and to continue working in the actual industry where I can not just better myself, but potentially create something to, to better someone else. For me, as much as uh, I've enjoyed my time at tech, I would like to just be able to take this opportunity to uh, use this as a stepping stone for my next step in life, which is going to be starting my career and using what I've learned here to be able to better the world. <laughs>
That first game, I believe, went into overtime, and that was that was indicative of how well they both played. I mean, I, I can't remember all the details of who scored first, but this place just came alive, and it was every player matched up well. I think penalties is what started to kill Calvin. Uh, I don't think anything was out of control. Um, you know, like you know, players just you know going out rogue. You know, but I think. That was a very good game, and, and I said it during that broadcast that iron sharpens iron, and this is a team that Tech needed to, to play against as you're coming near the postseason, and they had some really good skaters, very good defense. They had uh, good net minding, but they seized in really well. But Indiana Tech came out and played incredible. They came out and used defense, used every spot, and people, I mean, players were just playing they had to step up and they played very well because they played the position well and they, they took a lot of shots on target and some of them were surprising. You're like, oh, this is just going to be a dump, boom, goal. And it just got pretty exciting. But Calvin, that was a that was a game they needed to play at this part of their 21-22 season. Yeah, and so you mentioned coming down the stretch of the postseason, we have this weekend and then next weekend, and then we're heading right into the WAC tournament. And so looking at the standings earlier today, it looks like, the Warriors should be very close uh, to clinching that number one seed in the conference tournament. Uh, the points actually numerically are a little bit close, but there's a game split discrepancy that uh, doesn't look like it's going to get made up, so we'll see how it goes along. But Neon Tech with a big edge in point percentage. Uh, so Aquinas coming in after the break, a little bit of a limited schedule so far to this point. They're just 2-2. Two and two. Uh, They swept Lawrence Tech. Uh, but were swept by uh, UM Dearborn, which, as their ranking would indicate, uh, they were right in between those two teams, uh, so pretty accurate. Uh, but Aquinas, kind of a slower season, it seems like, uh, than last year. They're just 14-6-1, and uh, and so we'll see what kind of fight they can bring tonight. These two teams played here in November. It was an Indiana Tech sweep that weekend, 4-1 to and 6-2. to uh, Cam Chabot that weekend with two goals. Uh, and he's been hot lately, two goals apiece uh, in that series, I should mention. He had a goal and two assists combined last weekend. Uh, so him and Bennett as well have been hot. Bennett uh, with six goals in the last three games, uh, really, you know, powered behind that four-goal performance we saw against uh, Concordia a couple weeks ago. Yeah, Zach Bennett's on fire, and he's uh, sitting on 16 goals, and he got six of those, you know, in the last few games. And, you know, let's just talk about him. He is just... You know, he's just trying to bang it all in here. Uh, and all preps for the senior night next weekend, which is against Lawrence Tech, uh, February 11th to 7.30. And we'll see if he can add more here and add more there. But, yeah, I mean, he was, I mean, 10 goals. So he was, you know, he's hanging around with Granquist or Chabot, you know. And all of a sudden, he's knocking on the door to the uh, goal-scoring leader of Joe Holmberg. So, Bennett's, uh, he's come alive as well. But uh, get, uh, back to Aquinas. Aquinas is a tough team. And so I believe that when we took them in the fall and played them tough the season before, I believe we got knocked out of the WAC conference because of Aquinas. Aquinas is a very good team. They're tough. And, you know, so now they're coming off those two losses in the first half of the season. And we may see an incredible game tonight with Aquinas coming in here into the fourth. Yeah, always a close game, but it looks like we're ready for the starting lineups and the anthem, so we'll go ahead and turn it over to the PA.
about ready to get things started but before we do it is warriors for kids night here at the ice house warriors for kids is a student organization at indiana tech dedicated to raising funds and awareness for riley hospital for children riley is indiana's first and only comprehensive pediatric research hospital if you have not done so already feel free to make a donation to riley hospital online at give.rileykids.org slash indiana tech again that's give.rileykids.org slash indiana tech it is wear red night because of that doesn't look like there's a whole lot of red bryce i love it the tie he knew what was up and uh, i failed to factor that into my consideration i knew it was wear red and i just completely forgot about it today but it is what it is i'm representing america here yeah, uh, wearing yeah. the usa jersey as we get the olympics underway uh at least you know the hockey the women will be playing tomorrow morning against I believe the Russians, and they're favored by six and a half goals. Wow. So clearly the Russian women team, not nearly as formidable, formidable an opponent as the Russian men's team. But either way, we're about ready to get it started here from Indiana Tech. The puck is down, and here we go. Off the draw, comes right back behind the goal to Barnhill. There's Potter trying to play it up, but Curran's there. He'll fling that one through the goal now. Coming over to the far side, that's Schwant. Sends it back down low. Picking it up down there is McQuaid. Potter tries to knock it away as there's a one-timer by Davis. Save there. The rebound is loose and a goal early for Aquinas. So Aquinas not messing around. It looks like that was McQuaid finding that one in the slot. Yeah, they, they uh, picked up that. It looked like uh, there's going to be the first stop there, but yeah, McQuaid picked up and fired. He's almost sliding into the slot position, but he fires on the uh, left side of Barnhill. So they score early at 23 seconds. Yeah, he just picked that one up. The rebound there was juicy. And so he just didn't mess around, put that one right in. So not the start Indiana Tech was looking for, no doubt, as Carruthers coughs that one up. And now here comes Elford. He'll move it along. Chabot picks this one up. He'll circle behind the net. Goes for the rim. Krasny not there. It gets out, comes all the way down and will be an icing. Yeah, it looks like they got a little bit of jitters here. They just need to settle it down. I mean, right off, we got the line change here at only 23 seconds off that score. And let's, hoping this line will make it happen, but they're uh, kind of making a little mistakes and hopefully that one isn't gonna be costly. Yeah, we'll see as the game progresses. As in the draw was Bennett and they'll whistle it down immediately. Well, they almost had a whole, that almost was that 23 second shift before the whistle yeah. blew from the puck drop. All right, and then Elford gonna do it again. Yep. All right, comes right out here to Stewart at the near point. Back down the wall to Johnson, fired off of low. Brothers trying to knock this one away. Stepping in and sending them one back down was Richardson. Now Krasny chips it ahead. Bennett in hot pursuit of this one. He'll get to it first on the backhand, directs that one around the back of the goal, out of the reach of Chabot, onto the near side wall. 
Battled for here. Still trying to work it free. Chabot and Elford back for it. And finally it'll come up to Fami here on the near side point. Wrapped around to Dugan, he'll pick it up. Nope, he won't, lost the handle on it. And it's lofted out there by Stocker. Doesn't get very far. Here's Elford, one on four. He'll just dump that one in. Fami back there, looking to set it up for Indiana Tech. He'll step out, looks for the long stretch pass. He about hammered wow. his teammates, but Nicky Fork is there. It gets his stick tied up. And I think they're gonna call off sides on that one as that one was just blasted like right at the Tech bench. I thought it almost hit someone at first. Yeah, I was following it. I thought it was gonna go inside the scoring table there, but man, but so I didn't really see the offsides. That was a nice play. Yeah, Famous set that up. He was waiting for him, and, but he was well covered. Mm -hmm. Nikki Fork almost with the break there. This didn't work out for him. A little bit of a tie up action off the face off. As Aquinas continues to put the pressure on, there's Barney. He'll get it ahead to Nicky Forick with some room here. He'll, he's still able to get it out. Arnold chips it past his guy. And now coming the other way is Aquinas. He'll get dumped there by Potter. Still fumbling around here. Indiana Tech comes along to look. He'll send that one back down low. Potter trying to work it to Barney. Now here's Barney. Looks it ahead. And in the feet of Arnold, still makes its way out of the zone, though. As there's Barney again, chipped up to Dugan. Dugan, not a lot of teammate support, and it's easily taken away there by Look. Trying to gain the red line. He'll send that one down low. Could have been too many men, yeah, honestly. Yeah, there was. they played that right in front of the bench, and they had a six guy. Well, goes uncalled, and now Indiana Tech almost to too many men of their own as Carruthers comes on for Barney, and he'll hit the brakes behind the goal. No one on this weak side, the near side for us, of the ice. And Aquinas had that breakout perfectly defended, really nowhere to go. And it floats back down now for Lowe to play it. Lowe cuts back around. Bumped off the play, lost the handle. In there was Higgle, trying to send that one through. Now there's Johnson, fires that one, and it'll be held by Barnhill. You know what, I mean, Aquinas came out at 23 seconds, or 20-something, I think, 23 seconds, come out and scored that goal. They earned it. And right now, Indiana Tech is just playing a little bit slower here, and they need to pick this up. And uh, that's why they haven't put anything on, and they're almost at the four-minute, or three, three, just a little over the three-minute mark. Yeah, Indiana Tech really kind of on their heels. Aquinas, a hot start to this one, definitely seeming motivated as McQuaid, the goal scorer, fires that one just wide. Holmberg tries to chip it out. Now Grank was trying to keep it going. McQuaid's on him. And Long gonna try and work this one out to center. There's Campbell, he'll try and dump it in. Had his stick check. Now Holmberg into the corner. On his backhand, behind the goal. Cycles it down low. Grank was got taken down there. But Ali gets to it in the far corner. He takes a cross check. Know. That one's gonna get called, no doubt. That's about as easy as they come in the <laughs> cross checking department. Yeah, that first one was, uh, you know, it was just a good good hit, good good clear from around their netminder, but, boy, that one there. And, hey, we got away with one, but no, that one was a little. Yep, don't want to test your luck. And so now Tech will get the power play opportunity here, looking to find the equalizer. Now let's see if this gives gets them started here, gets the spark they need. And it takes the draw. It's tied up in his skates. Chabot and Krasny trying to help. And Potter can't keep that one in. Barney retreating. Tatulio watches him. And the Warriors will get the power play breakout set up here. Cross pass here to Bennett. He'll cut back through the middle. Gets it out wide to Chabot. Chabot now trying to work this one down low. Look bodies him off. Sticks with it. Trying to rim it around now for Potter here on the near side and eventually cleared down by the Saints. Barney picks it up, he's got open ice in front of him, he'll skate it himself. Knife through a couple of Saints, on the backhand, he'll direct it towards oh. Chabot, behind the goal. We'll see if he circles around, still with it. Moves it over to Barney, Barney fires oh. and the tip was oh. there for Ali, Bennett can't find it. And it's all Potter sticking out. Yeah, Potter, didn't tip that, that was a bit of a breakaway there. And they're gonna get too many here, I think, as 
everyone was hopping on without necessarily waiting long enough for everyone to hop off. So the official got the thumb clicker out and actually counted. Or is it going to be too many? I don't know. I mean, well, it doesn't look so like it. Oh, no, there you go. Well, back to four on four here, or even strength, but minute differential, exactly. So the end of the power play wiped out here for the Warriors. Low up to Granquist. It's in his skates. He's bumped there by Curran. Carruthers comes in to pick that one up. Hits the brakes and steps out, same side he went behind. And it's once again in the feet of Granquist. A nice stick save there by Barnhill. Behind the goal. Curran trying to move that one out in front. And another turnover there by Granquist, sent right back in by Davis. Elford in Gretzky's office, moves it up, fires the one-timer there. That was Johnson, and now it's on Holmberg's stick. He'll look to skate this one free. Gains the red line and thought about dumping it, but he tried to keep it himself with that big body. You know, why not try and weather the check? There's Potter looking to fire, he does. And a save there by Allman. Yeah, Davis for Aquinas, is a, he's a good player. He uh, he kept that puck in, kept the action going for Aquinas to keep an eye on him as he uh, progresses through this game. 14 and a half still to go here, period number one. 12 seconds still on the penalty to Aquinas. And right off the draw, trying to rip that one was Dugan. Now look, trying to feed it into the middle. It's off the skates of Arnold. He'll get it back. Time expires on the penalty there to McQuaid. So that's not McQuaid. That was Stewart. And chipped in there now in pursuit. Arnold. Barney rims this one around. Comes out to look. Dugan trying to chop that one out. Potter, it's in his skates too. At the far point, Schwant dangles his way down low. Barney plays this one up but not out, look. Arnold seals the, seals the wall, and it's eventually sent right back in. Schwant tumbles in, but it's cleared out there by Potter. Chasing back for this one is look. 23 seconds to go in the power play for Aquinas. Moving this one ahead is Johnson. Johnson into the offensive zone. Fires, saved there by Barnhill. Collected by Rosema. And someone's taken down, and we'll get, I believe, another penalty. There's a hook and call, and that was pretty soft. It'll be on Will Campbell. So seven seconds worth of five on three. And here we go. Works around. Shot there, just wide. Behind the goal. That's Shengelet. Moves it up now to Stewart at the near side. Back down to Shengelet, trying to go into the middle for Curran. But it was foiled by Tech and sent all the way down by Krasny. Back to five on four. Behind the goal is Stewart. Moves it far side now for Stockert. Stockert slows up, comes right to Crothers, and he wastes no time, sending it straight back down to the other end. Under a minute and a half now to go on the power play for Aquinas. Stockert trying to chase this one down yet again. Keeps it moving. Now there's Holmberg. He'll take over and send this one down. Look picks up. Grenquist coming in hard on the four check. Behind the goal, Look able to make the moves to fend off Grenquist for the time being. Comes over now to Schwant. Up the near side, Schwant sends it over to Johnson. Potter chops that one away from him. Granquist keeps the line moving and gets it out. Holmberg in pursuit of this one. Able to tie up with his guy. He's oh, gonna take nice the puck away here. Yeah, well done. Along the near side, comes out to low. And Tech will regroup, 40 seconds. Just under that still on the power play. Brothers fires this one all the way down. Look behind his own net, feels the pressure from Krasny and dumps it off. Long stretch pass oh. right into the skates of Bennett. Tried to get it ahead to Krasny, who might have had a little mini breakaway. And he'll take a dump there on Schwant. 
And coming the other way with it is Aquinas. Behind the goal, almost finding look there, but a good defensive play there from Bennett to get the stick there. Into the corner. Comes out now, there's Krasny. Gets his feet moving, looking for an option. Finds Carruthers. Carruthers into the corner now, down the far side. Tries the oh, backhand pass, it's her. still there. Oh. Arnold tried, but just couldn't get it to go. And the whistle will blow. Another save there from Allman. Yeah, Allman followed that one. That was a good, good series there as we were back to even strength. All evened up here in a somewhat slowly progressing first period as it's an offensive zone draw for Tech, but they lose it. Trying to stifle the breakout, but it will come free off the stick of Hickel. Still being battled for here. Arnold picks it out of the scrum. One on four. Huh. Keeps the puck as he gets through it, but only for a moment as it's eventually tipped just out. And now into the Tech zone. Fammy will backtrack for it. Hickel's bringing the heat there. Gets up to Nicky Forrick. Picking this one up is Arnold. He's got Dugan with him. Yeah. And they'll go in off sides. Yeah, Dugan just, he was following it. Just got a little too anxious. Yeah, Aquinas has done their homework. They've came prepared for this game, and it shows as they have the only goal put up on the scoreboard here. But however, Tech was looking a little sluggish, but they were playing their style of hockey, and they adapt well, and they're starting to come around. You can see how they're figuring this one out, and they're really, really starting to show it here at uh, near the halfway mark of the first. Cranquist will be into the draw. He's typically pretty good on these for Indiana Tech. And Potter gets it over to Barney. A nice soft pass there to Holmberg. Comes over to Grankwitz. He'll fire that one wide. Potter's there as it rolls to him on the far point. Tries to send it back down low. Ali had to stick tied up for a moment. Gets it back now. But had to pivot. Lost it. Potter. Now it comes to Ali. He'll backhand this one deep. Allman behind the net trying to be the sixth man out there. As Barney trying to pinch down. This one squeaks out past him. Franklis goes back, bumps and breaks, goes over to Potter. Stretch pass there, Ali tips that one in, prevents the icing. This one comes out now to Fari. He'll take a hit there from low, but dumps the puck in. Carruthers behind the net. Uh -oh. Turn over there and a stuff at the side of the goal. Stockert is going to score, and Aquinas up 2-0. So the net got burped there. I'm not sure if it's off. It's... Looks like it's still on, it just got tapped. So Indiana Tech, not really, uh, they started putting it together there, uh, but that goal there from Stockert, stuff, and then the rebound attempt is really gonna kinda just slow down that momentum Tech was starting to build, as that one comes about 10 minutes after the first one. Yeah, as, as I was saying about preparation, Aquinas' reaction time's up. They're setting the pace and the tempo here, and it's taken a while for Tech to get something going here. So they already have the momentum set before the game even began, and they're just experiencing it right now. And so Tech's got to play a lot of catch up now at, at every angle. Yeah, Aquinas, you know, clearly coming into this one was ready to go. And they've been on top of it really for the most part since the opening puck drop as Plummer sends that one in. Comes across now, back towards this near side for Johnson. He couldn't handle the pass. Vammy almost coughed it up again. A lot of turnovers or near turnovers for Indiana Tech. As there's Gibson, plays that one right into the linesman. He'll take a hit there. Maybe, you know, a little cross-check action, but not to the point of a penalty. As that one's gotten out by a plumber. Bennett trying to chop it up. And he'll go for the hit, but gets stood up there. That was by Davis. As here comes Aquinas the other way once again. Plummer able to get a stick on that one. Navigate it to some open ice. There's Plummer trying to get some revenge there on Davis for what happened to Bennett. Body's flying in the corner as well. Now here's Fami, up to Krasny. He'll keep it moving into the corner. There's Chabot down there. Rimmed around now for McQuaid at the far side. He'll pick this one up, take his time. Skates with a little bit, dumps it in when he gains the red line. Barnhill goes back to play it, and he'll send it towards Potter. That one knocked down as Krasny tried clearing it, sent back down low. Barney will get to this one. Pick it up on the backhand and the turnover there. As Aquinas seems to be incredibly prepared for this game. 
Yeah, they're creating the turnovers in the danger zone here and creating chances, and they've shown twice they can do it. Seems like they've definitely watched their fair share of film as every time Tech tries to do something, it seems like it's getting knocked down by Aquinas or just barely. As here's Potter, now he'll try and break this one out again. Up the near side to Ali, who immediately gets closed off on. Goes all the way down, and we'll get a penalty here. This one will be to Kerwin Johnson. Two Johnsons on the team. Well, let's see if this will do it here. They need to get something here. I mean, they have came out, and it looks like they're playing a uh, power play when they get it into the Indiana Tech zone, that being of Aquinas. So when we get uh, when Tech gets into the attacking zone, they can, they can set up and hold their own. So let's see what the man advantage here, what they can do. It'll be Arnold to take the draw here. Dugan picks it up in the corner. Deanna Tech looking to get this one set up. Comes to Campbell center point. Back to Arnold. He about fumbles it. Plummer gets it right back. Goes in his skates. Arnold takes over. Into the corner. Still gathering their bearings again. Tries oh, to back in and wow, that was well done. Oh, that was nice. Quite a setting up defensive. Almost a small box there, seeing where the pass was going to go. No one's going to do that from about goal line. That was a beautiful play. Nice. That'll get them started. Yeah, it looked like Indiana Tech starting to get a little loose there on the power play. Had a great initial play. And then Arnold, a wonderful job there, backhanding that one in from that side. And so power play goal there for Indiana Tech. Some jousting going on over there on the far side, just making sure everyone's, you know, behaving themselves. And finally, here we go. Along the near side, Aquinas right back to it. They'll dump this one in. Barnhill will leave it for low. Low steps out, long That's stretch pass stretch. here oh, for Ali. He gets now. it. It works out. Ali trying to dodge the hit, still gets a piece it's of alive. it. It's still there, trying to work it. Oh, don't play body, play puck. And a penalty. Let's take them both. You said it, Bryce. Got to focus on playing the puck instead of the body. Usually you want to play body to get the puck mm -hmm. or, or take it away. or But that, yeah, he lost sight of it. And so it'll be Schwant and Ali making their way to the box for their respective teams, assuming matching roughings. So Indiana Tech cut the deficit in half there with that one. So back to where they started, they answered just about two and a half minutes later. And we'll be at four on four it looks like. Here for two minutes. Barney down low for Chabot. Goes cross for Potter. Fires looking for Bennett at the back door, almost had him. Goes back down into the corner now for Chabot. He'll circle again, looking for the same thing. And they almost get it again. Bennett pushed into the goaltender, and that's going to draw a reaction. Bennett going to get a penalty for this one. He's not happy about it. It's Allman who is down. And Bennett going to be getting goalie interference here. Well, that'll bring power play for Aquinas. Bennett was, that's the second effort he had skating through the paint there on a shot. And this time they just, they wasn't gonna have it. Yeah, it looked at least like from our angle that he was pushed into the goalie and that's what he was pleading. But doesn't matter, he'll sit two for it. Allman is up and looks to be all right, ready to go. And so it'll be a rare four on three power play here for two minutes. Yeah, let's see if he, uh, they stay cool on this because if I was the one that got called for that, I just would tell the ref, okay, I didn't do it. So mm -hmm. I'll take another two minute because I will do it the next time. So let's hope the anger just turns into strategy on good play. Brasley the forward out there for Tech, Potter and Barney, and it's Potter that clears it down right away. And picking it up is Stockert looking to get this started. Comes over here to Stewart. He'll get hit there by Barney. 
Keeps the play moving forward though. Into the middle for Curran, back out to Stewart. Goes across for Stocker. Behind the goal, getting roughed up there is Elford. Comes free, Barney can't get to that one first. Elford behind the net, still jousting with Barney. Content to just eat this one, he's on top of it. Potter's in there now as well, it's three on two. But Indiana Tech gonna come away with that one and nearly on clear it pass. before we get a whistle. And yep, it will be a hand pass. So Barney was just, uh, he went to the reporter and said, what did you see? And I think he will, we will see a second half of that later in this game. 112 on the power play in 52 seconds. Stepping out of the box will be Schwant and Ali. Brothers over there for Indiana Tech. Grenquist, it's a hand pass, or is there a penalty? A trip right, we're going to have a trip. And so I think this one might also be on Indiana Tech. So it'll be a five on three. And it's Carruthers who will go. Lots of penalties this period. I might, you know, even in the second period, have to flip over and start writing penalties down on the other one. Or this might just become a lost cause. Well, this has fallen into the hands of Aquinas here very well. They came out and set, set the tone. They're getting some calls their way on a defensive reaction to Indiana Tech trying to catch up, but they are one goal away. I mean, this is, they're getting outpaced in a lot of areas, but they don't need to react to or overreact and put themselves in a the box like they have here with the uh, three quarter mark here already ticked away. Yeah, so we'll see what they end up doing here with the penalties on the scoreboard. So since two of them are matching, they might just take the Ali penalty down since there's someone already with his same amount of time on the board. No changes yet. Uh, Aquinas is just getting this figured out still. Yeah, it looks like it's just going to still be a four on three. Here's where it gets confusing because you could send the wrong guy out of the box. They'll take advantage of the clock not set up there right. All right, well, the puck is down either way, and it's immediately sent out. Real estate getting really expensive over there in the Indiana Tech penalty box. Yeah, uh, they're going to have to have a second story added on if honestly, they can keep it up. It's becoming very valued. All right, here's Look into the circuit. He'll rip that one right on Barnhill, who will make the save. 25 seconds on the matching penalties. Bennett with 45 seconds left on his. And I think 52 more than that are on the penalty to Carruthers. Long into the draw for Aquinas. Frank was his opposite. A little bit of a tie up there. Franklis gets to that one first. A nice move there to find some open room for himself. He'll skate this one ahead under some stick pressure. He'll lose control of it. Now here comes look up ice. He'll send it across for Roseman. Now there's Barney, plenty of time here. He'll send this one down. Five seconds to go, so that will be the end of the matching penalties. And no one for Indiana Tech stepping out of the box, not even to go to the bench. So now it'll be five on three. Potter fires that one down. So Ali will come out of the box on the next whistle and presumably just head to the bench. Look, setting things up. He'll step out. Wow. Now back to just a five on four. Look, opposite dumped that one in. Far side, Alford gets to it. He'll tie up with Fami. Trying to get this one out to Stocker. Comes behind the goal. They're looking for a give and go there to Shangulet. It was at the front of the goal and cleared out by Friesen. A minute and 11 seconds to go. Here's Stewart. Up ice, misses his target. Oh, and poke. Yeah, Fami closes over on that one. Capitalizes on the error, error and knocks it away. Now here's Lowe. And sent right back down. So Indiana Tech's penalty kill, very efficient here right now. 
Ullman plays this one up to his teammates. Stockert trying to get around Barney. And it comes out to Elford. Taking his time, he'll just backhand it in. Barney goes back for it, 37 seconds to go. Barney lets a couple more seconds tick off and fires it down. Aquinas really not been able to get anything set up here in the last couple of minutes. As here's Rumpke. Dumps it down low, there's Hickel trying to battle for it now. Looks like Aquinas has kind of given up here on the power play units. As at the oh, half fall, a weird bounce, loose. still loose. And it comes out now, comes around to Davis. He'll fire through traffic. That one looked like it made it to Barnhill. As we're back to even strength, Potter knocks this one away, gets it up to Nikki Fork, who can't clear it out. Barney behind the goal. Up now to Holmberg, who does a 90 degree pass off the wall, and it's kept alive by Hickel. Barney. Pumps the brakes, sends it right back to Hickel. Good hit. Barney up to Holmberg, looking to get it in the middle. Chip up the wall, one-timer there by Davis. That one flies too high. Nicky Fork chops this one out. Now here comes Granquist. He's in a race. Can he get to this one? Holmberg, Holmberg with him too, and oh. Granquist bumped off the play there. Still with oh. it. Tried to cut to the front. Now Nicky Fork behind the goal again, and able to get to this one easily is Davis. Up to Hickel, it's in his uh, pants almost. And so easy turnover there and sent right back in by Nikki Forrick. Allman active playing the puck, gets it to Johnson. There's Dugan on the goal line. He'll keep stick handling. It's there at the, for Nikki Forrick. They keep digging away. And eventually the whistle blows. Everyone's settled down for the most part. So Indiana Tech, a really good penalty kill. And then almost with the goal there on the other end. That would have been a huge jolt of momentum here coming down the stretch in the first period. Yeah, it looked like pro shop out here. A lot of lumber laying on the ice. It just shows that one. We didn't know why until the puck or the stick hit the boards and it split in half. So they're playing that that aggressive here. Tech's trying to get this thing tied up right here at the two-minute warning mark. Arnold and Shangulet into the faceoff. Trying to push it forward was Arnold. Aquinas takes over, trying to get it up to Fari. Taken over there by Arnold. He about catches a knee. Well, it looks to be all good. Here comes Shengulet off sides by about a step. Was Stewart. So it could have been a dangerous little two on two there with Stewart breaking towards the net, but a little too eager and was decently off sides. 152, Shengulet and Arnold still out there. Still just barely gets across the blue line. Here's Arnold, he's got Dugan with him. They don't really have numbers. Arnold carries this one in. Still hanging on to it. Sends it towards oh. the net, almost had Nicky Fork at the back door cutting down there. And now here comes Aquinas the other way. He'll dump that one in deep. Carruthers goes back for it. Comes all the way out now and sent immediately back in there by Schwant. Fari was offside, so that allows Indiana Tech plenty of time to get organized. Lowell will step out and start it ahead. Almost found Plummer, just a little bit out in front, and icing will be called as that one goes all the way down. Shouldn't hurt Tech too much. They've just changed out, but this is the second time I've seen Quinas not do a, a bench advantage here, so they're going to stick with what they got, so this may help out Tech. It'll be Elford, Stockert, and Johnson with Schwant and Look out there for Aquinas, still rocking with it. And on the faceoff, Lowe had his stick tied up, wasn't able to get to it. Comes out into the middle now, and Friesen able to get to it and bring this one out. Friesen pitching wedges this one into the corner. Carruthers in on the forecheck, trying to throw some bottle on Look. Side of the goal, Ooh. Carruthers almost wow. had one, but couldn't find the back of the net. Still down there is Plummer. Joffrey coming in hot, trying to get to that one. He'll miss it. And it comes out now into the middle where Johnson skates it ahead. He'll fire it right into Barney. And coming the other way now is Plummer. Plummer gets around one, Good hit gets check. bumped off the play there, loses it, and Johnson will go back and regroup. Take it away. Brasney, a good play on the forecheck, knocks that one away. And now out comes Elford. No numbers advantage, easily lifted nice there check. by Barney. Bennett trying to get this one in. He gets it in deep. Chabot chases it down. Bennett on the takeaway. 
Bennett, backhands this one up to Barney, walks the line, sends it across to Potter. Softy. Trying to feed one. Oh, Bennett was still there looking for the rebound. It's still fumbling around out in the slot. And eventually it's cleared out. Barney right back up the near wall one, to Krasny. Two, three, four, five. It, it was close, and I think they're going to get a penalty on somebody just as time expires. We had one still down here. So we'll see what he calls. I think we're going to have to wait until after the intermission to find out. So we'll go ahead and step aside. Indiana Tech Hockey brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Tech goes by many names. Business, fine art, forensic science. Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships. It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 260's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. My name is Kian Ching. And I am Solomon Long. We are electrical engineering students at Indiana Tech and will be graduating May of 2021. For electrical engineering, I gained an interest through robotics in high school, actually. And I got to know the mechanical engineering side of robotics, then I got to learn the electrical side, and I kind of learned that. I like the electrical side a little better than the mechanical side. I actually relate it back to cooking when I was younger find the meal that I like, tear it apart, and figure out what aspect about it that I like and see if I could recreate it at home. And I sort of took that, that logical like mindset of taking something that's interesting, breaking it apart, and putting it back together. And I found out then that engineering is, that's basically what engineering is. So <laughs> we decided to pursue this, uh, this project because it, it was sort of interesting. It was definitely difficult, but we hadn't seen somebody else do this before. Well, our project is basically a human detection device that detects human footsteps within a certain radius. The general functionality of our device is it takes in uh, frequency waves from anything around, and then we coded it onto the device where it just calculates and filters out anything that's not a footstep. And then from there, it just kind of calculates where the location is through a a um, neat function called multilateration, which is a whole math theory and everything. Yeah, so the, the process itself basically just takes data from a person walking around. It takes that data mixed with all the noise from the environment and filters it out using the, the code and the filters the device itself. Determines what signal is actually a person versus what was noise. Then uses the delay between all the sensors to find out where that person is located. 
from my knowledge, the marketability of this product would be more towards the security side and marketing side, actually. So for security side, it's more of a discrete surveillance system versus like a camera in a room where someone can see it versus our sensing device that you can put under like a table where nobody can see it. And then it can also do like heat mapping and uh, population traffic to determine like in a room where the most visited places. So during the first semester of Senior Project or Senior Project 1, we basically were just going through research, trying to figure out what project we actually wanted to talk about, what project we wanted to do. Once the project was decided, then the rest of the semester was research. And then Senior Project 2 is where we actually really started going through and building the device. We had the components that we wanted, and then we just went in with design iterations. We went in with all kind of this trial and error, trying to make something work, spending hours and hours in this lab. So to, to break the process down uh, to actually manufacture our device, what we decided to do was first start with what sensors we needed, what microcontrollers we needed, how we were going to hook everything up. To actually assemble the project, first we decided on how big the project was going to be, how much room it should take up, how got all the dimensions of all the components, the microcontroller, the sensors, the chip, all of that, the battery, then took the that design uh, wired all the controllers and everything up onto a prototyping board, the filters, the, the microcontroller, the sensors, put it all together, and then just kind of temporarily mounted it to the device to actually prototype. And then for the actual like functionality of making all these components work together, it kind of was just all cored into the coding, which we used for coding MATLAB and also uh, C, C++ coding. And then from that, we used uh, kurtosis, which is kind of like a probabilities and statistics theory. Then from that, we used um, the time of arrivals and the time difference of arrivals of the actual wave. And then from that, we took that data in and put into multilateration, which is kind of like the core bread and butter of the entire like project where it determined where the location of that person was from the time differences of the wave to the sensors. Uh, I would say like for issues that we've encountered and kind of just like failures and prototypes it became very apparent that like the time difference and like having everything like really close was kind of an issue and then we decided for our last prototype that we built was going to be like increasing the distance between the sensors so that we didn't have to work as close with the time differences. Yeah, a lot of our, our device revolved around that time difference of arrival or time of arrivals. Mm -hmm. And that ended up, the faster that we could sample, the more accurate we'd be able to actually take that data. Overall, in like at least for me, what I used from my other classes for this project was coding skills. Uh, I also learned that uh, drawing like schematics and just drawing out ideas and just throwing out ideas end up creating better ideas than trying to find that perfect idea to start with. For me, like on a personal level, I'm, I'm very much a computer science guy. I really like to code. So being able to see my code that I wrote actually like do what I want is always fulfilling in itself. When the project was done, that first moment there just feeling that huge thing like it works. Yeah. And as soon as it worked, that was just a, that was super, super fun. Yeah. I really appreciated Indiana Tech for the, a lot of the professors that have been around. Like I know Zach, Rumsey, Professor Byers, all three of them have been huge supports. They've been super encouraging, they've been super nice. Having them help, that was definitely something that I really appreciated about tech. As excited as I am to graduate, I will miss all the friends and all the teachers that I have, but I am ready to, to move on and to continue working in the actual industry where I can not just better myself, but potentially create something to, to better someone else. For me, as much as uh, I've enjoyed my time at tech, I would like to just be able to take this opportunity to uh, use this as a stepping stone for my next step in life, which is going to be starting my career and using what I've learned here to be able to better the world. <laughs>
visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. All right, welcome back inside the Parkview Sport One Ice House. First intermission underway, and it's a two to one lead for Aquinas. We'll check out the scoring recap. They got it started early. This one was McQuaid with a goal just very early in the game, only 23 seconds in, and he was able to find this rebound and put it in the back of the net. And so Aquinas off to a very hot start. And after that, we played a 1-0 for a while, and then just about 10 minutes later, Finding another goal here was Nick Stocker. We'll take a look at this one here as he just stuffs this one at the side of the goal, gets the puck back, and does it again. That time able to find the goal. And then for Indiana Tech, they're able to salvage at least one here as just a little bit over a minute and a half later, Alex Arnold converted on the power play to cut the deficit in half. So Indiana Tech after this one in a much better position than they were uh, at about 10 minutes into that game. And Aquinas really has been uh, kind of taking the charge here. It seems like they've really uh, scouted this game well as they've been in the passing lanes, breaking up Indiana Tech's uh, zone exits uh, plenty. But Indiana Tech able to battle back and find a goal there that period. And so we are at 2-1, to one, and with that, we will step aside here once again. Indiana Tech Hockey brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. My name is Kian Ching. And I am Solomon Long. We are electrical engineering students at Indiana Tech and will be graduating May of 2021. For electrical engineering, I gained an interest through robotics in high school, actually. And I got to know the mechanical engineering side of robotics, then I got to learn the electrical side, and I kind of learned that. I like the electrical side a little better than the mechanical side. I actually relate it back to cooking when I was younger find the meal that I like, tear it apart, and figure out what aspect about it that I like and see if I could recreate it at home. 
And I sort of took that that logical like mindset of taking something that's interesting, breaking it apart, and putting it back together. And I found out then that engineering is, that's basically what engineering is. So <laughs> we decided to pursue this like, this project because it, it was sort of interesting. It was definitely difficult, but we hadn't seen somebody else do this before. Well, our project is basically a human detection device that detects human footsteps within a certain radius. The general functionality of our device is it takes in uh, frequency waves from anything around, and then we coded it onto the device where it just calculates and filters out anything. That All right, welcome back. We're going to have to cut those lovely gentlemen off as we're about ready to get going here once again. Second period about set to get her going. Indiana Tech down one, looking to get right back into this one. It'll be Arnold out there to start things off with his line mates Plummer and Dugan. 20 minutes on the clock, two minutes on the time for penalties here as it's a power play right off the rip for Indiana Tech. The penalty going to Davis for Aquinas. Still not exactly sure what it was, but we're going to work on Bryce's assumption of too many men as here's Arnold, plenty of room through the middle. He'll skate this one into the offensive zone, hand it off to Nicky Four. goes right back to Arnold. Up top for Campbell, he'll look to shoot, but instead gives off to Dugan. Dugan has to skate this one out of the zone, lost the handle, cuts back in. And across the blue line, now Arnold again. He'll look to fire. Toe drag lets it go. Couldn't get it off. Here's Campbell, center point. He'll fire. That one saved there by Allman. Into the corner. It's fired just off Nicky Forick. Along the half wall, trying to get this one into the middle of the ice. Nicky Forick facing some stick pressure there. Comes to Dugan. Dugan lost the handle. Nicky Forick in the slot. Shot right there off of Stewart. Comes down to Barnhill. He'll play it right up to Nicky Fork as Aquinas tries to complete at least a partial change. They'll change two as Arnold right back in on the four check. Gets to this one first. Behind the net, he guides this one over to Holmberg. Holmberg up the wall, over to Carruthers. Down to low. Trying to feed in the middle. There's a shot there. Side of the goal. Rebound still alive. Aquinas keeps it out for the time being. And the whistle blows as there was a scramble, but Indiana Tech unable to find the back of the net there. Had a couple of looks at it, but ultimately the Saints hold strong. So 43 seconds on the penalty to Davis. Face off inside the defensive zone of Aquinas. It's Granquist. Tie up, still sitting there. Comes with a near wall, and it'll be backhanded out of the zone there by Rumpke. Barnhill stops it, gives it to Carruthers. He'll stand behind the goal and get this one going. Up ice to Holmberg, skating through neutral, gets around one and into the offensive zone. He keeps turning on the gas around behind the goal, brings it up to low here at the near side. Trying to go back down to Holmberg, he was covered. Tried to feed it along the line, but comes out. Carruthers gets it to Granquist. Touch pass, leaving it for low, but it's eventually turned all the way back in there by Nelson. Power play about to expire. Carruthers thought he might have the stretch pass to Ali. Comes up to Holmberg instead. Holmberg into the offensive zone. He'll skate it into the corner. Trying to work behind the goal now. He's got Stewart all over him. Tries to cycle for Ali. Granquist there, as is Elford. Holmberg trying to work his way back onto the scene, and it comes out for Aquinas. This one is Johnson into the corner. Fires that one, and it'll hit the safety netting out of play, and will be whistled down. So power play comes and goes for Indiana Tech. Nothing happening there. And they'll look to regroup and go back on the attack here, needing to break this one out, go full 200 feet. It's bended into the draw for Indiana Tech. Elford is his opposite. And carrying this one out is Chabot. He's got Krazzy at the far side, carries it himself, dumps it in now behind the goal. Krazzy trying to get to this one, bodies his guy off the puck, but doesn't get the puck. Up near along the half wall. Chipped out, but kept in by Potter. Knocked down immediately by Elford. Krasny turns this one back into the offensive zone. Richardson turns it over to Krasny. Krasny down low looking for Bennett. It was in between his legs. Out to Barney. Over to his 
partner Potter up to Krasny, and he'll whip that one in. Stewart in the corner. Chabot comes in, picks that one up. It comes out to neutral, and Potter able to get the stick there on Stockert. He'll turn it over to Johnson, back to Elford, and Aquinas regroups. Richeson up ice. Barney moves it back in the right direction. He's got it again. Almost off sides, but it will stick with it. Turns back around, trying to feed Joffrey. Into the corner now for Plummer. Feeds that one through the goal mouth, and it's going to come out of the zone. And now Stockert took a hit there from Carruthers. Low, making this play up ice. Plummer trying to go back into the middle for Friesen. Still battled for here on the near side. Fari rims it around behind the goal. Low pinches down, but couldn't keep that one in. Joffrey backhanded across to Carruthers. He knocks that one down and keeps it going ahead. Here comes Joffrey again. He's got some room in front of him. He'll fire and save there by Allman. Four minutes and six seconds gone here in period numero dos. No change in the scoring so far. It's Arnold out there taking the draw. Into the corner it goes. Around behind the goal for Davis. Gets it up to Fari. Shangulet right back to him. One on one with Gibson. He'll fire and score. Russell Shangulet will make it a two goal lead once again for Aquinas. He'll pick this one up off the breakout and gets it right back there. One on one, Gibson fires that one through his legs and snipes Barnhill there and makes it three to one. So Indiana Tech down by two once again as Tech really did a good job for the most part on that play. It was just Sh Shangulet with the nice shot. Not a whole lot Gibson could do there as he had it fired through his legs. All right, back to it. Here's Ali, gets it to Granquist. Takes the hit there, but gets it in. Frankwist comes in, tries to keep that one going and in the corner. Ali trying to make it happen here. And Aquinas now with the breakout. Coming the other way is McQuaid. Dumps that one in, far corner. And on it is Davis. He goes to work with Barney. Tumbled off the play, and now it comes up the near side to Ali. Frankwist picks it up with speed through the neutral zone. He'll try and chip it into himself. Has to deal with Richeson. And it's rimmed around toward Barney. He keeps it alive. Comes out to Potter. He winds and fires. Looking for the tip at the front of the goal was Holmberg. Now Ali. Ali from the goal line fires that one off the post. Right to McQuaid. McQuaid with some room here and he'll chip it out. Barney looks to chip it right back in. Now Chabot into the corner. He's got help with him. Trying to feed it and a goal for Joel Holmberg. That pass was absolutely on the money there from Chabot. It really doesn't get much better than that, folks. Chabot picks this one up. Looks like he's running out of room. Not a great angle, but he puts it right on the money. And what a finish there by Holmberg. But honestly, the credit on that one got to go to Chabot. That was a fantastic pass to find Holmberg. And Indiana Tech right back within one as it's a 3-2 game, 14-41 on the clock. Carruthers trying to make the play, goes to Lowe, who turned it over, comes right back to Carruthers, trying the stretch pass, looking for Krasny, who had fallen. Look, comes out into the middle. The pass was a floater, Carruthers takes it over. Bennett gains the red line and rims this one around. Chabot was there for Indiana Tech, couldn't handle it. Now Elford behind his own net. Holmberg looks to throw the body there. Johnson, he's met there by Krasny. Bennett as well. Johnson skates this one out. Gets it ahead to Stockert. And behind the goal is Carruthers. He gets taken off the play. Had his stick lifted. Feet came out from underneath him. But he finds his way back up to his feet. There's Friesen into the skates. It eventually comes free. There's Alford. Still with it now. 
Along the half wall, back across for Look. Look in, he'll fire. Kind of tipped behind the goal. Lowe pins his man to the wall. Chabot able to pick this one free, backhanded out. Or to the line, now it comes out. And it's Joffrey leading the charge the other way. He's got Friesen with him. Joffrey, he'll let it go. And into the glove there of Allman. Offensive zone draw here for the Warriors. Plummer will take it. And puck is down, here we go. Behind his own goal is Richeson. Behind for Stewart. And eventually chipped out there by Nelson. Comes to Barney. Up to low. Now for Plummer, tried to find Friesen. Too hard over his stick. Stewart trying to make the cross pass and almost put into his own goal. That looks to be, I think, Elford. Actually, that was Rumpke who almost backhanded it right into his own goal, trying to send that one behind the net for the breakout as Potter sends Nelson to the ice. Plummer gives it right back to Nelson. Potter trying to get the stick there on Hickel. Barney back there now, trying to guide this one up ice. Comes in Nicky Forrick, slows things down. There's Nicky Fork again. Now he'll move this one ahead. Sends it on goal. And Allman able to squeeze that one between his legs and keep the score just three to two. Back to it. Arnold down there working, but it comes to Davis. Back for Johnson. And now up here, skating this one is Rosma. Sends it to Campbell, trying to work it back up ice to Dugan, who was intercepted. Now here's Arnold getting a lot of ice time tonight. Go skate this one across the red line and dump it in. Play onside, Davis trying to rim this one around. Nobody is home. But a weird bounce, and it allows Aquinas to take over. Three on one. Comes to Shangulet. He'll fire. And that time, the save is there from Barnhill. So the three on one opportunity goes by the wayside for Aquinas. Is Shangulet there in the middle? Opted to let it go instead of trying to go back to Fari, who might have had a look there on our far side. Just about halfway through period number two here from the Parkview Sport One Ice House. Again, it's Warriors for Kids Night here at the Ice House. Warriors for Kids, a student organization at Indiana Tech looking to raise money for Riley Hospital for Children. You can donate online. I said the link at the beginning of the game. But for those of you just tuning in, it's give.rileykids.org slash Indiana Tech. Off the draw, look. It looks to fire that one, but it goes wide. Comes to Holmberg off the back wall. He'll cough it up and shot right there onto Barnhill. Carruthers and his guy go into the corner hard. Holmberg gets it to low. At the far side wall, a big battle ensues. And it's Granquist trying to navigate this one now. Gets it up to Ali. Ali free of the zone. He'll just chip that one off the windows all the way down for an icing. So it'll again come all the way down. Would love to do some stats updates, but the live stats, once again, are not live here tonight from the Ice House. Truly unfortunate, as it's a great resource for all of us as we broadcast these Indiana Tech games, whether it be basketball, men's volleyball going on now as well, and hockey, of course. As next time we'll be with you for men's hockey will be next Friday, 7.30. It'll be senior night here from the Ice House, always in exciting time and so Bryce mentioned it in our pregame Zach Bennett going to be one of the seniors honored again as a grad student as here comes Holmberg the other way 
Toe drags around, trying to backhand this one. The rebound's out front, but Indiana Tech can't get a stick on it. And now coming the other way is McQuaid. McQuaid tries to get it to Curran, but they can't connect on that one. And now here comes Ali. Ali looking to rim this one around. Comes to Davis as Holmberg's changing. So Aquinas will stick with it for now as there goes Curran into the corner. Trying to feed that one out in front now. Look to be McQuaid. There's Bennett. Trying to clear this one out and does. Now Alfred skates this one back into the corner. Looks to feed that one on goal. And Barnhill able to make the save. Like I said, Bennett trying to close out his college career here on a good note, especially going into the conference tournament and the national tournament. Indiana Tech once again in solid position for especially the WAC tournament coming up here in a couple of weeks. This one off the draw into the netting and will be blown dead. So Quine is starting to put something together a little bit here. Excuse me, is off the draw. It's Barney to Bennett, who lost it. Taken away there by Johnson. Trying to work it back up to Krasny, but it misfired. And there's the other Johnson. Krasny fires as it slipped through the feet of Johnson. Krasny just ripped that one. But the save from Allman comes through. And Bennett about got into it there with Davis. But everything is all good. Now here's Chabot, he's got some room. Slows up, feeds that one on goal. Didn't have a teammate there. Barney pinches down expecting some contact. Now Krasny gets his stick tied up, looking for a hook maybe, isn't gonna get it. There's Joffrey trying to get that one away from Johnson. Plummer takes over with some room there, tries to find Krasny, goes to Joffrey. He'll fire it at the side of the goal. And Allman was there to make the save. Nine ten to go here in period number two. Goals this period from Shengulet and Joel Holmberg finishing off that beautiful, beautiful feed there from Chabot. Right on the money. As Holmberg now up to 20 goals on the season, which coming in into tonight, he was 20th in ACHA with goals at 19, now 20. We'll see how far that can move him up and if he'll add to that tonight and tomorrow night as Indiana Tech will make the trip up to Grand Rapids to play Aquinas on their home turf. As there's a shot there going wide from Rumpke. Comes out to look, he'll fire. Rebound was there but sent just wide of the post. Near corner now. Working this one is Aquinas. Look, fires again. Rebound is still loose, but picked up there by Friesen. And he'll backhand this one off the wall and out of the zone. Retreating his look. Has Friesen hounding him and coughed it up. And now Arnold's going to get to this one in the corner, looking for some teammate support. Dugan in the middle, couldn't handle the pass. Nicky Flork racing in, and he couldn't corral it for a shot either. And now up the far side is Nelson. Gets around low into the corner. Low bodies him off the play. Regrouping there was Arnold. Taken down on the play was Hickel. Comes out into the middle where Dugan skates this one out. Gets around one, dodged the hit there. That was coming from Rosma. Dugan through the legs, trying to work this one towards the goal behind the net now. Tries a backhand pass, it comes out to Carruthers. He'll let it fire. That one off the side of the net. Stewart tries to send this one out. Goes back down into the corner where it's rimmed around and Lowe gets to it first. Lowe back down into the corner. Nikki Forrick now. Pivots, tries to send that one at the goal, and it's eventually sent out by the Aquinas captain, Mason Stewart. Brothers into the middle for Arnold. Takes a bump there from Stewart, but gets it in deep. Richardson rims it around for Fari. Fari comes cross ice for Rosma, who gets bodied up there by Carruthers. Didn't get all of it. Comes back towards those two now. Carruthers with it on his stick. Backs up into his own zone a little more. 
They work it around to Ali, who got a weird bounce there off of the Zamboni doors. We've seen that one before. Thought Barnhill might have had it covered there, did not. And coming the other way is Holmberg. He loses it. Looked like the linesman might have had something to do with that one. And it's eventually backhanded down into the corner by Ali. Davis trying to move this one up. Granquist is there, sends it back down. Shangulet now is his turn. Cycles it up for Fari, and he'll clear. McQuaid has to race in to negate the icing. Icing is waved off. Potter's there with him. No teammates in support until now for McQuaid. Up to wall for Ali on the far side. Pass through his legs into the middle for Chabot, and Chabot comes racing up the far side now. Chabot navigates into the corner, trying to find Bennett with the backhand pass in the middle. They didn't connect. Stretch pass up ice for McQuaid. Couldn't find him. Barney over to Gibson. Back to Barney. Six minutes to go here, period number two. Starting to get a really solid flow to this one as it comes to Gibson. Gibson looking on stretch pass for Chabot. Finds Krasny as he got a bounce off the skate there from the Aquinas player at the back side. Was Bennett. They couldn't connect. Pass was behind him. There's Chabot along the goal line. He's trying to work that one through to the slot. Gibson steps up trying to lay the hit. Puck comes out and will hit the safety netting and will be stationed there for a minute before someone hits the netting and it drops down low into the locker room area. So pace picking up a lot there. Some good back and forth action. Still two to three. 5.38 to go. Plummer wins that draw, but over there to get to it was Schwant. He'll send that one down. No icing as there was a cluster of players there. Someone probably got a piece of it. Plummer off the glass, all the way down. This one going to be icing. So it'll come all the way down. Indiana Tech still behind by a goal here. Looking to make up ground. Now Aquinas is having a great season on the road. They are just 8-2. I should say not just. They are 8-2 on the road this season, which accounts for most of their wins. 14-6-1 overall, 8-2 on the road. So they're probably happy to be playing on the road as opposed to being at home. Their only losses on the road this season were here at Indiana Tech and on the road last weekend at UM Dearborn. So the two teams above them in the WAC standings as of this moment. And those WAC semifinals, when the tournament comes around in a few weeks, those should be two very compelling games. And we'll see what comes of the championship. Either way, the top of the WAC, very competitive games typically. So 20 teams of the national tournament. As of now, three teams from the WAC set to be at that tournament. Aquinas number 20 is firmly on the bubble, but as we move in the last few weeks, it looks like Indiana Tech and UM Dearborn are in pretty solid position, and of course there is the auto bid for the conference tournament champion, as there was a shot from Carruthers that didn't make it to the net. Stretch pass backhanded, Carruthers got the glove on it, sends it across for Arnold, he'll send that one in deep. Just about four minutes to go now here. Along the near side, Nelson. Stretch pass, looking for Elford. Chops that one along. Hickel trying to get to it. Dugan got the stick on him. Now Carruthers trying to poke this one ahead. Able to get the stop on that one was Rumpke. On the far side, Low and Hickel really going at it there. Now Arnold over to Low. Low sends this one across in front of Nicky Forrick. Can't catch up to it in time. Rumpke. Fires that one right into Carruthers, who had fallen to his knees. Now here's Arnold. Arnold feeding this one ahead for Holmberg. Plenty of room. Joel Holmberg in. He'll fire. Rebound there off the post. Sticking with it, but couldn't direct that one into the net. A great chance there for Holmberg, but unable to convert on the chance. Had a couple of really sound looks at that one. As it comes back up ice for Granquist, he had it taken away. And now here's Rumke moving this one ahead. Rumke out there for a solid chunk of time right now. Comes up the wall to Ali. Looks up and doesn't see any orange jerseys, so he'll skate it himself, dump it in. Holmberg at the far side, trying to get in on Schwant. Fari now at the far side. Sent it right off the skates of his line mate, Chengulet. 
And it comes back for Schwant once again. Lifted out there by Rosma. Comes back to Ali. Holmberg across the red line. Has Granquist with him. Just barely stayed on sides as Granquist, I think, thought he was going to get that one dumped in there by Holmberg. Holmberg ought to just skate that one in on his own. But stretching the leg and staying on side was Granquist. There's Barney now over to Potter. Potter, bounce pass off the wall to Granquist. And look, sent that one right back in. Took a hit from Ali for his troubles. Granquist picks this one back up once again. Looking for Bennett. No icing called on that one. Schwant keeps the rim going. Indiana Tech got to be careful there of too many men. And icing once again waved off here. Potter. Chop that one up. Chabot going to battle. Potter moves it into the far side. Bennett stops up and picks it. Sends it back to Potter behind the goal. No rush here from Potter behind his own net. A little over a minute and a half. He'll let this one fly. And that one got a piece of the goalie. It looked like from here, but went just wide and will be called icing. So not a bad idea there from Potter and now we get a second here we'll try and sneak in a look at that near miss from Holmberg as he had some room here to work with and this second chance the one that went off the post was probably the best look that he had there as we come back to live action now and immediately get another whistle So I don't want to jinx it, but after the parade to the penalty box in period number one, so far, no penalties in the second period. Just the carryover time from the penalty at 20 minutes of period one. So I don't want to jinx it. Minute and a half still to go. But next Thanksgiving, I think this is going to be one thing I end up being thankful for. Getting everyone set for the draw. And it's Aquinas that wins this one. And a near miss there. That shot from Stewart got tipped down in front and ended up going just wide. Johnson up to Stewart again. He'll fire. Blocked there by Lowe. Friesen trying to get to this one and sent it in the direction of Joffrey. Too far out in front. No icing. And rimmed around here by Richeson. And poked out by Stockert. Elfert hits the brakes. Turnover from Friesen right to Johnson. But Friesen able to get this one right back. Under a minute to go now. Joffrey the other way. Sends this one in deep. Stockert back for it. Backhands this one up. Tech cautious of the too many men. Potter dumps that one in on goal. Blocker to side by Allman. Stewart and Plummer there. Franklis comes in as well. Dugan coming in off the bench. Only get, nearly had a chance, but Barney Skate unable to hold that one in at the line. Eventually turn back in. Stewart, stretch pass here for Elford. Touches it over to Stockert. Across the red line, he'll dump it in. 20 seconds to go now. Barney behind his goal. He'll step out. Turn over here. Johnson fires that one right into the glove for a whistle. Thirteen seconds to go on the dot. 13.0. And we'll head into our second intermission. We'll see if Indiana Tech can find a late goal here to draw back even. Or are they going to trail by one going into the final 20 minutes of action? But an offensive zone draw here for Aquinas, certainly a chance that they could find one as it comes to Dugan. And a clear out here will just about do it for the period. Nikki Forick is just going to try and keep that one moving easily ahead. And that will do it for the second period, so we'll go ahead and step aside. Indiana Tech Hockey brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. 
want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Tech goes by many names. Business, fine art, forensic science. Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships, it's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. My name is Kian Ching. I am Solomon Long. We are electrical engineering students at Indiana Tech and will be graduating May of 2021. For electrical engineering, I gained an interest through robotics in high school, actually. And I got to know the mechanical engineering side of robotics, then I got to learn the electrical side, and I kind of learned that. I like the electrical side a little better than the mechanical side. I actually relate it back to cooking when I was younger find the meal that I like, tear it apart, and figure out what aspect about it that I like and see if I could recreate it at home. And I sort of took that, that logical like mindset of taking something that's interesting, breaking it apart, and putting it back together. And I found out then that engineering is, that's basically what engineering is. So <laughs> we decided to pursue this, uh, this project because it, it was sort of interesting. It was definitely difficult, but we hadn't seen somebody else do this before. Well, our project is basically a human detection device that detects human footsteps within a certain radius. The general functionality of our device is it takes in uh, frequency waves from anything around, and then we coded it onto the device where it just calculates and filters out anything that's not a footstep. And then from there, it just kind of calculates where the location is through a um, neat function called multilateration, which is a whole math theory and everything. Yeah, so the, the process itself basically just takes data from a person walking around. It takes that data mixed with all the noise from the environment and filters it out using the, the code and the filters the device itself. Determines what signal is actually a person versus what was noise. Then uses the delay between all the sensors to find out where that person is located. From my knowledge, the marketability of this product would be more towards the security side and marketing side, actually. So for security side, it's more of a discrete surveillance system versus like a camera in a room where someone can see it versus our sensing device that you can put under like a table where nobody can see it. And then it can also do like heat mapping and uh, population traffic to determine like in a room where the most visited places. So during the first semester of Senior Project, or Senior Project 1, we basically were just going through research, trying to figure out what project we actually wanted to talk about, what project we wanted to do. Once the project was decided, then the rest of the semester was research. And then Senior Project 2 is where we actually really started going through and building the device. We had the components that we wanted, and then we just went in with design iterations. We went in with all kind of just trial and error, trying to make something work, spending hours and hours in this lab. So to, to break the process down um, to actually manufacture our device, what we decided to do was first start with what sensors we needed, what microcontrollers we needed, how we were going to hook everything up. 
to actually assemble the project, first we decided on how big the project was going to be, how much room it should take up, how got all the dimensions of all the components, the microcontroller, the sensors, the chip, all that, the battery, then took the that design, uh, wired all the controllers and everything up onto a prototyping board, the filters, the, the microcontroller, the sensors, put it all together, and then just kind of temporarily mounted it to the device to actually prototype. And then for the actual like functionality of making all these components work together, it kind of was just all cored into the coding, which we used for coding MATLAB and also uh, C, C++ coding. And then from that, we used uh, Kurtosis, which is kind of like a probabilities and statistics theory. Then from that, we used um, the time of arrivals and the time difference of arrivals of the actual wave. And then from that, we took that data in and put into multilateration, which is kind of like the core bread and butter of the entire like project where it determined where the location of that person was from the time differences of the wave to the sensors. Uh, I would say like for issues that we've encountered and kind of just like failures and prototypes, it became very apparent that like the time difference and like having everything like really close was kind of an issue and then we decided for our last prototype that we built was going to be like increasing the distance between the sensors so that we didn't have to work as close with the time differences. Yeah, a lot of our, our device revolved around that time difference of arrival or time of arrivals mm -hmm. and that ended up the faster that we could sample the more accurate we'd be able to actually take that data. Overall in like at least for me what I used from my other classes for this project was coding skills. Uh, I also learned that uh, drawing like schematics and just drawing out ideas and just throwing out ideas end up creating better ideas than trying to find that perfect idea to start with. For me, like on a personal level, I'm, I'm very much a computer science guy. I really like to code. So being able to see my code that I wrote actually like do what I want is always fulfilling in itself. When the project was done, that first moment there just feeling that huge thing like it works. Yeah. And as soon as it worked, that was just a, that was super, super fun. Yeah. I really appreciated Indiana Tech for the, a lot of the professors that have been around, like I know Zach, Rumsey, Professor Byers, all three of them have been huge supports. They've been super encouraging, they've been super nice. Having them help, that was definitely something that I really appreciated about Tech. As excited as I am to graduate, I will miss all the friends and all the teachers that I have, but I am ready to, to move on and to continue working in the actual industry where I can not just better myself, but potentially create something to, to better someone else. For me, as much as uh, I've enjoyed my time at Tech, I would like to just be able to take this opportunity to uh, use this as a stepping stone for my next step in life, which is going to be starting my career and using what I've learned here to be able to better the world. <laughs>
but just a beautiful pass here from Chabot to be able to find Holmberg. Could not have put that one in a better spot. Skated right into it, one-timed it at the back door, and that is where the scoring stands now. But one additional replay here as Holmberg, a couple of near misses, had plenty of room here with the original shot, the backhand off the post. Uh, and then eventually Aquinas was able to rim that one around and out of the zone for the relief. And so that is where we're at right now. Three to two, no penalties that period, thankfully. And so we'll see what the final 20 minutes of action bring. We'll step aside here once again. Indiana Tech Hockey brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. goes by many names. Business, fine art, forensic science. Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships. It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Welcome back inside the Parkview Sport One Ice House. Third period action about ready to get underway here. Indiana Tech, the 14th ranked team in the nation, trails Aquinas number 20 by one. And while we have a minute, we'll just look at the rankings. Lindenwood locking down the top spot as long as I can remember with 13 games played the entire season. Uh, so not exactly battle-tested, but hey, 13-0, and I'm sure in those 13 games they've played uh, some solid teams. Uh, Minot State, number two at 19-2-0. And, oh. and then UNLV, Liberty, and Iowa State. Well, Liberty third, UNLV four. And then Iowa State at number five. Liberty and UNLV actually played this past weekend uh, in a little bit of an altercation at the end of the game. Made it on uh, one of the uh, ACHA um, like fan account Instagram pages. 
So interesting stuff. Quite the long trip to Las Vegas all the way out to Virginia. And would love to see Indiana Tech schedule some of these higher up teams as uh, they have not played a single team above them in the rankings uh, this season, at least that I can remember, as Holmberg tees off on one there. And Indiana Tech with the puck here in the offensive zone. Ali in the corner, works this one up the half wall, sends it back down low for Holmberg. Holmberg himself up the half wall. Barney whips it across to Potter. Potter sends that one. And a tip there by Ali just goes wide. And it comes out of the zone. Curran across the red line had his dump and attempt knocked down by Barney. Still gets in, but it comes right back out to center off the bench. Look, rims this one around. Curran and Barney look to meet here as Barney nearly pokes that one past Curran. But Curran sends it back down low. Whipped around now by Potter. And there was Stockert to meet it for Aquinas. Barney looking to skate this one out on his own. Got it too far in front of him. Krasny going to send this one down with the high stick, but Aquinas touches first, so it's all good to go. Bennett along the wall. Sent on goal by Elford. Look looks to fire that one high, but tipped up out of play. It looked to be off a teammate. And so 18.52 on the clock, and we get another whistle. So a big period here for Indiana Tech, looking to kind of really get back into a groove as it's been a, you know, tough going a little bit for them here lately, it seems like. Outside of uh, the Saturday game against Concordia a couple of weeks ago, tracking all the way back to that Dearborn series uh, with the two, uh, well, the tie and the loss. And then kind of a reset weekend against Concordia with the 9-0 win. Uh, but Calvin, a team they probably should have beat uh, worse than they did, at least by looking at the records. Indiana Tech, uh, 18, 22 now, 22, 3, and 1. And Calvin is like 9 and 8. So probably a team that Indiana Tech should have beat by more than they did. But nonetheless, the two wins. And here against Aquinas, a team that historically they've fared pretty well against. In the uh, all-time series, it's 10-8-1, the record for Indiana Tech. And we mentioned the sweep earlier this season. As Nikki Fork sends out one hard behind the net. Allman slows it down for Schwant over to Look. He'll backhand this one all the way out to Fami. Fami, turnover there. Ripping that shot was Rosema. And now Arnold trying to get this one going the other way. He'll turn it over, and that's Shangulet. Gibson rubs Shangulet off. Arnold almost stepping into one more Schwan. He eventually let it go, almost had a teammate get his stick on that right in front of him, but saw Schwant winding up and let it fire. And so, Two minutes and three seconds gone here. Joe Hacker calling her play-by-play. -play. Tyler Sinclair on the camera enjoying the in-house music going on right now. Rumpke to the draw here against Granquist. Puck is down and it's a win there for Rumpke. Potter trying to send this one around to the far side for Ali. Johnson's there first for Aquinas. Barney goes to battle there with Rumpke. Comes back around now for Holmberg. He'll get this one out to Ali, who leaves it for Granquist. Now here comes Granquist. Indiana Tech looking to get it going here on offense. And promptly, Granquist bumped off the play there, lost the puck. Comes to Barney. He'll send it off to skates of Rumpke into the corner. Behind the goal, it's Holmberg. Now Ali steps into it. Barney winds and lets it go. Traffic there, still a shot for Holmberg. Blocked again in front. Rumpke looking to get this one ahead and does. And it'll be chipped into the bench of Aquinas. A little bit of friendly fire action there from Nelson. I believe Shakira going on right now here. You, you know, you love to hear it. Shakira truly one of the musical greats. It's off the draw, here we go. Into the corner, it's Krasny. Working this one behind the net. Sticks with it, sends it back down for Bennett, trying to keep the cycle moving there for Chabot. 
He couldn't pick it up. Carruthers backs that one back into the corner. Probably could have gotten a penalty there, but didn't. And will eventually get the whistle to blow. Everything settles down. Has taken a rough hit there with McQuaid from Carruthers. But probably not worthy of a penalty. I think McQuaid was kind of just trying to hit the brakes. And so Carruthers you know, overpowered him and sent him into the wall. Looked bad, but probably in reality it wasn't too bad for McQuaid. He got right back up, sitting on the bench now, all good to go for his next shift, we'll assume. As Bennett out there for the offensive draw. Comes around now and out of the zone. Sent all the way in on Barnhill, who will just hold. So it will, in the matter of seconds, go from a offensive zone draw for Indiana Tech to a defensive zone draw. Neither team, well now, just as I say that, Indiana Tech makes changes. And they're gonna get sent right back off the ice. Referee having none of it. And now he's gonna have to go explain to Frank DeCristofero why he can't be making changes. Indiana Tech, the home team, so they do get the right of last change. But apparently the official just thought that they took too long. And so we'll see how this one develops, but I don't imagine that this decision will get reversed. And everyone hopping back on the bench. So here we go, 16:42. And like I said, it will be Bennett still. No teams making changes. Bennett and Elford into the dot. Comes out to Stewart. He'll send that one on goal, but it was knocked away by Chabot before it got very far. Tipped there by Aquinas in front. Elford in the corner. Comes up to Krasny. Couldn't get this one cleared. Elford again. Poke checked away by Carruthers. Krasny thought he might try and stretch pass to Bennett. And Aquinas able to keep this one in at the line once again. Low, trying to send this one up the wall. Thought he had Bennett, but Elford pinched in. Kept it alive, now here comes Chabot. Finally out of the zone, come the Warriors. Stockert looking to immediately turn this one back up for Aquinas as Fami keeps it alive. And up. Almost hit the ceiling, but didn't. Now coming over to meet this one is Fami. Sends it around. Tech makes changes, so look. Caught by the Zimboni doors. That nice little bounce. Arnold with some room now. Fanned on the shot. Into the corner. Dugan tumbles, trying to play that one. And now Stockert cleared this one all the way out to Campbell. Try to make a quick, pla quick pass to Fami, but send it all the way back into his own corner. Now Arnold knifes a little bit through to Saints, tries to move it along, and eventually it gets all the way into the corner. Tech making quick changes once again. Now here comes Long through neutral ice. He's about hammered there by Plummer, who still was able to knock it away. Johnson over to Davis. Davis up the wall. Long takes over, tried to chip it past Barney, who shut the door on that one. Curran, now he'll get it deep. Barney goes back for it. Curran grabs Barney and kind of whips him around. As I say that, it comes around to Joffrey. Now Friesen picks up. Here comes Bobby Friesen. He'll chip this one into the corner. Plummer trying to race in on Johnson. He'll take a big hit and lose his helmet. He'll either have to put it on and they'll just blow the whistle and not even mess with it. And so the helmet comes off a of plumber. He'll have to vacate the ice surface. His teammate, his line mates will change as well. And so wasting no time, ended up calling the whistle on that one, blowing it dead. And so it's a neutral zone draw here. Granquist able to win that one. It comes to low. He'll give it right over to Carruthers. Carruthers back to low. Low, across the red line, lost the handle on it, turned the other way by the Saints. Carruthers feeds it in the middle for Granquist. Here comes Granquist, he'll build up a little bit of speed. At the hash marks, he turns it back around, fanned on sending the pass through to the slot. Holmberg sends it in front for Ali, who couldn't get the stick on it. And cleared 
up to the line, but not out. Holmberg almost with a nice tip there. Looking to even this one up, but just didn't get it high enough up. And a save there by Allman. Fourteen oh seven. Bennett taking the draw. Puck is down and fired at the net by the Warriors. Bennett feed from Chabot. Crothers kept it alive. Crothers, he'll let it go right into Krasny. And now breaking this one out is Rosma. Gets it across to Shangulet. Shangulet into the zone. He'll let that one fly. Crothers bodying him off as the puck goes into the corner off of Barnhill. Cross ice pass, here comes Bennett. Bennett has Chabot with him. Drops for Chabot at the side of the goal. There was Krasny at the back door, couldn't get it to him. Krasny in the near dot, sends up to Campbell, he'll fire. Rebound is there, Bennett trying to get it to Krasny. Krasny trying to baseball swing, but sent it high. Got a piece of it though, some great hand-eye coordination being showed there as Bennett was looking for the loose puck in front. Draws a crowd just as the whistle blows. Thirteen sixteen to go. Indiana Tech needing a goal to tie and force overtime. Or better yet, two goals to just win this one outright. Off the draw, here's Holmberg, circling, sends that one at the net, and up into the safety netting. The goaltender, Allman, never even saw it because it was up in the air immediately and hit just the very bottom part of that safety netting behind the net. About five seconds tick off the clock. Campbell, left point, plenty of time. Feeds to Holmberg, had a shooting lane, did Campbell, but opted for the pass instead. Granquist along the half wall. Holmberg comes in and breaks that one up. Working at it there with Johnson. It comes around on the near side to Ali. He'll whip it towards the goal mouth. Nobody home for Indiana Tech. And it's lofted out to center now. Pass intended for Ali, misses his target. Goes all the way down. Icing waved off. Holmberg picks up. Behind the goal, fends off the defender. Still circling around to the near side. Cycles down low for Ali. Ali comes around the other way, looking for Holmberg. As Holmberg was cutting to the front of the net, couldn't get the pass. Ali trying to feather that one down low for Granquist. Barney pinches, keeps that one alive, sends it right on goal to Allman, who will hold for a whistle. 12-16 to play now. So Indiana Tech pushing, but still unable to find the equalizer. That would make this one a 3-3 game. After going down 2-0 and 3-1, two goal left since twice, Indiana Tech's been able to fight within one, but have only either been tied in this one, and that's all they've gotten, and that was only for 23 seconds. So Indiana Tech really been on the back foot the entire game. They've played much better here the last couple periods, but a slow start. The period number one kind of dooming them here a little bit. They can't find one. Nikki Forrick gets that one in deep. Indiana Tech offside, so they have to tag up. Looking for Johnson. That pass goes too long. Barney softly finds a stick of Arnold. He gets around a couple and into the corner. Trying to backhand it out in front. Nikki Fort got a stick on it. But it couldn't really get much on it and create the scoring chances. This one comes all the way down and icing will actually be called this time. Nearing the halfway mark here of our final period of regulation play. Then it will step into the draw and taking it against him will be David Elford, the Ontario native. Tied up, puck was still sitting there off the faceoff. Comes free now, and free of the zone. Carruthers backtracking for it, has Stockard on him. He'll slow things up behind his own net. 
Soccer all up in the grill here. The Barnhill is the stretch pass there for Bennett. Icing waved off. Look, retreating for this one. Looking to find Elford. Krasny comes all the way across for Lowe. Lowe with some space here. Tries to fire, but it was blocked off the skates there of Johnson. Carruthers just lost that one down. It will not be icing as Look picks up before it gets that far. Krasny in on the four check. Low. Fires that shot just wide. And now picking this one up and trying to build some speed is Rosma. Stretch pass across for Look. Was off target. And Barnhill fumbled it. And a goal for Aquinas. Oh, my goodness. That is just about the worst way that they could have given up a goal. We'll see how much of this we catch on the replay. But Barnhill thought he had it. As you see, kind of reacts when he knew that he wasn't going to have it. And he was just exposed. Aquinas players are there. And there's really just nothing that they can do there. And that is just a devastating way to give up the goal that makes it a 4-2 to two game. Just crushing for Indiana Tech. Didn't even catch who scored that one. But nonetheless, so Aquinas back on top by two. And just as Indiana Tech continue to really build the momentum uh, it just goes by the wayside and just a brutal brutal break there for Indiana Tech and yeah that is just incredibly unfortunate so now Indiana Tech's task is even taller we'll see the resilience of this team and if they're going to be able to Make this one happen as Campbell takes that one right off the ankles. He's slow, but Ali has a break here, and he scores! Just as I say it, Indiana Tech answering right back again, and it's Malik Ali able to find the back of the net here. Right off Campbell, takes one for the team there. Ali able to race in and pick this one up and just stick handles once, lets it go. And so Indiana Tech going to be right back within one here they waste no time just about 10 seconds later and so effectively it doesn't even really matter that much so look at that good stuff from Indiana Tech and if there's one thing to say it's that they have bounced back on three of the four Aquinas goals they've scored about a minute and a half later a minute and one second later and uh, 19 seconds later so Indiana Tech Whenever Aquinas has scored another goal, is here's Elford who had it taken away. As soon as Aquinas has scored goals outside of that first one, Indiana Tech's been right on top of it with a great response. As the stick of Davis went flying, he just grabs one from a teammate off the bench. It looks a little too big for him, but he'll make it work. As the pass almost gets into the stick, but it disrupts Elford enough that he can't really pick that one up in stride. And now here's Potter behind the net. Rims this one all the way up towards Barney. Now Arnold, he gets planted into the wall. And Barney didn't like that one. Might have gone to get a little retribution or that player was just in his way as Bennett jumps up to knock that one down. Only delays the inevitable as the puck eventually comes free. Now here's Barney skating across the Indian Tech logo. Gets right by Bennett, fires through the legs of Davis, but a nice reaction save there by Allman. Behind the goal, Davis keeps the chain going. And it's sent all the way out by Fari. Comes to Carruthers. Right back, Carruthers off to skates of Bennett. And the linesman still in the zone for now, but eventually Fari's able to get it away. Two on one. Two on two is a great defensive effort there from Krasny prevents that pass from getting through. And so Krasny with a really nice play as that could have been a scoring chance there. A mini little two on one. Krasny with a great back check to equalize those numbers and take that one away. So with about eight and a half to go, Indiana Tech still trailing by one. Here comes Alex Carruthers. He knifes through the neutral zone, knifes through a couple more, and had the puck directed on goal, bumped off. And Save there from Allman.
8.28 to go here, period number three. Drinkwist into the draw. Couple of goals exchanged, we're still right where we were. Fami, that shot off of Allman and up into the safety netting. Eight twenty-two. Indiana Tech chasing still. Off the draw. That was Fammy trying to send that one through. Comes back out to him. Rolling puck didn't really get much of it. Holmberg, Fammy crossing ice for Ali. Ali fires, looking to see if he can add another one to his resume as that one goes right into the bench of the Saints. Still trying to identify here who that Aquinas player that scored that last goal was. As I think that one might have been Fari, but not sure, couldn't really tell. And not that it really makes much of a difference right now. The one that does matter is Ali, getting Indiana Tech right back in it. 19 seconds later. We're gonna say it's Fari. It looks like a 91. Second digit was definitely a one. All right, again, doesn't really make a huge difference right now, but here we go once again, out of the zone. Potter rips that one back in. Schwant to look. He'll go back, find Curran, who tips it between the legs and it gets all the way down. Potter picks up. Into the middle for Arnold. Who's on and off his stick and turned right back in by Hickel. Barney. Got to be careful here. Almost coughed it up once or twice, but able to handle himself there under the pressure. And now he's getting away with it. He's Arnold. Across the blue line into the offensive zone, but the play blown dead offside. Getting down to crunch time here for Tech. But well, we've seen how they can strike quickly. And looking to do so here as they try and get this one back even. Like I said, it really only trailed. Uh, I should say not trailed. They've really only been tied for probably less than five minutes of combined game time. But again, a great job of answering whenever goals are scored by Aquinas. Outside of that first one, just 23 seconds in, as Krasny tips that one right into the linesman, trying to get it in. Low, fending off Hickel. Hickel shifts that one ahead, right onto players sitting on the Indiana Tech bench. And the whistle will blow, 6.52 to go here in regulation play. Rankless to the draw. His opposite will be Shangulet. Rankless tries to push it right through, but he can't get through himself, so it's dumped right in on Barnhill by Aquinas. Holmberg got a piece of that one and chipped it all the way down. Ali racing in on Look, but Look able to pick this one up himself. Up ahead to Rosma. Brothers trying to look for Holmberg in the middle. Misfired. Schwant back to Look. Look, up the wall to Rosma. Into the middle now. Here comes Shangulet. He's got Fari with him. Carruthers body Shangulet off the play. Sends it behind the goal for Lowe, who hits the brakes. Back to Carruthers. Ali burns out trying to pick that one up and turn up ice. Holmberg now leads the Warrior attack. Knives through the middle and gets it to Lowe. Lowe with the chance. Tries to feed it to Granquist. Couldn't make it happen. Now Lowe, plenty of time here for Lowe. He'll fire, but a big shot block comes through for Aquinas. It looked like Roseman got a piece of that one. Now here's Johnson quickly the other way. One-on-one -on -one with Campbell. It's in his feet, but Campbell stands his ground. Off the glass, but not out. It is out. Now here's Holmberg. Holmberg, one-on-two, bodied off the play there by Johnson. Comes around to Stewart. He'll play it up ice for Johnson. Johnson, Elford cutting to the net and scores.
Elford able to put Aquinas back on top by one, now two. And Aquinas coming through in the big moment. Elford able to kind of get some separation there as Arnold was with him and then just kind of stopped really skating as Elford hit the gas and was able to get in and really had no one contesting him when he took that shot. And so it becomes a 5-3 to three Aquinas lead, and it has definitely gotten quieter here at the Sport 1 Parkview Ice House. Potter rimming this one around for Bennett. Into the middle it finds Krasny. Krasny racing in, trying to make it happen himself. He'll fire, the rebound is there, but it's sent into the corner by Aquinas. Up ice now, here comes Stockert. Chips it around Potter. He's got Elford with him again. Can Elford find another one? Shooting that one himself was Stockert. Now picks up his rebound. Stewart immediately over. And another shot there from Richeson. Turn right back up ice. Aquinas putting the foot on the gas here. Chabot and Ali run into each other. Elford picks up. He's got Curran with him. They got a little bit of room here to work. Elford, the rebound is there for Curran. Oh, another brutal bounce. As this is just unfortunate again here for Tech as these players are going for a change for the Warriors, as you see it here. And so when Elford cuts back into the middle, there's really no one. And then just Curran has the whole net there. He picks up the rebound. And so that is probably going to end up being the dagger as it is Aquinas who uh, responds after scoring a goal of their own. And Indiana Tech really on the back foot now, down three with 4.45 to go. They are in quite the hole right now. But crazier things have been done, I guess. And here's Holmberg, gets it into Ali. Ali trying to get to the near side. Feeds it through, but taken away by Look. Look, finds Curran. Now here comes Curran. He'll just dump that one in and go for a change. Low, back for it for the Warriors. Under some pressure there. That's McQuaid down low. He's got Long with him. Just pinned to the wall right now. Aquinas is perfectly happy with this. Up three to just kind of eat the puck, run the clock out a little if that's what it comes to. As Corrales is able to poke that one out of the zone. Skating this one up ice is Schwant. Gets around Plummer and dumps it in. He'll go and four check on his own. Barnhill comes out to play it. Able to get it, some elevation on it. Goes right back into the corner though. Plummer moves it ahead for Arnold. Sent into the far corner now. Barney, excuse me, that's Potter. Up to Nicky Forrick, comes cross ice for Plummer. It's behind him, but he catches it, having to stop up. Back hands it across for Nicky Forrick. Nicky Forrick now, he'll fire. Goes through Allman, but into the near corner. Hickle down there, so is Plummer. Couple players aside, battling it out down low. This comes out to Barney. Barney walks the line to the center point, looking for a shooting lane and a big block for Hickel. Potter looking for the same. Comes down low now for Plummer, trying to find Arnold. Nicky Florek toe picks as he's trying to get his stick on that one. Under three minutes to go now. Barney able to get to this one. His Rumpke brought, brought the pressure. Fari. Back for Johnson, goes all the way back for Stewart. Up ice, Campbell takes over and gets it up to Chabot. Chabot to Bennett, Bennett into the zone. He'll fire into the glove of Allman, who will hold for the whistle. So a weird period in terms of goals for Aquinas, for at least these uh, the fourth and sixth. Just some uh, weird bounces, especially the Barnhill one. Uh, and then the rebound there just pops right out for Curran. And it really has got Indiana Tech here on the back foot. 2.36 to go. And if they decide to pull the goalie, you'd assume that'll be happening any time now. But down three, you never know. Campbell sends it back for Fami. Back across for Campbell. Shangulet dumps it in deep. Barnhill out of the crease to play that one. Leaves it for Fami. 
Fami up to Chabot. Fami gets dumped in the corner. And Chabot wasn't quite ready for that pass. Campbell falls as well. And now Chabot takes a shot here at Stewart, knocks his stick away, and both of them are going to go and sit. And those become our first penalties since the first period. And with a minute 58 left, it'll be Chabot and Stewart each sitting. Probably for a slash for Chabot and a rough for Stewart is what we'll call it. And so Indiana Tech need to make sure that they keep their composure here. The last thing you want to do is something silly, get you tossed out or suspended. Well, an ejection is a suspension, but point taken. So 158 to go. Will be at four on four, likely for the remainder of this hockey game. Brothers, just ahead of Granquist, no ice and called. Schwant gets it up to Look. Now here's Look. Look goes to work here on low. Toe drags, tries to get through the middle with the stick handle, but couldn't. Carruthers pokes it away. Holmberg picks up, and here comes Holmberg. Holmberg looking to find some room here. He does. Almost had a nice goal there, but foiled there by Allman. Under a minute and a half to go. Look. Turns back into the corner. Over to Schwant. Leaves it back for Look. Look steps out, skates this one ahead. Over to Schwant. Schwant hits the brakes. Tries to backhand this one into the corner. Sticks with it. He's got it again. Has Kern with him. Couldn't get it to him. Taken away by Arnold. Backhanded ahead. Carruthers gets it clear of the zone. Ali in pursuit. Ali picks it up now. Carruthers shoots. That one goes high. And comes to Elford. Elford steps behind the goal, 45 seconds to go, and they look content to just kind of wait this one out and force Indiana Tech to come at them as they'll fire that one into the netting up above. 38 seconds to go. We'll take a look here again at those last two goals for Aquinas as here's the one from Elford. Now, this was a solid goal. The pass here was right on the money as well. And he'll put that one on the top corner there. As 38 seconds to go, here's Bennett into the draw. He'll take it, but lose it. And there's Johnson now. Johnson able to get this one out of the zone. Barney picks it up with the glove and drops it for himself. Wrap up the broadcast quick after. As there's a shot at the side of the goal from Long. Bumped away. And coming free is Bennett. Bennett looking for a last second opportunity here. He backhands that one. Loses it. Krasny. Still with it. As Bennett ties up. There's just 2.6 seconds left. And Bennett having some words exchanged here. With I think that's Davis. And we'll take a look at that last goal from Aquinas as everyone kind of settles down. Krasny going to go ahead, oh, just skate to the bench. The penalty box door is open. But it doesn't look like anyone's really going at the moment. And there are penalties to Davis and Bennett, and they'll just have them skate off the ice. No need to risk any issues. Making sure everything is taken care of here before we wrap this one up. And looks like finally, here we go. 2.6 seconds, and that'll do it. So Indiana Tech gonna fall here by a score of six to three. Aquinas coming through with the win. 
and they'll have a rematch tomorrow night. But that'll really do it here for us. So my name is Joe Hacker calling your play-by-play. -play. Tyler Sinclair on the camera. We thank you for joining us here for Indiana Tech Hockey, brought to you by SummitCitySports.com.